what do you know? Increasing frequency, new sections of freeway are being opened around the world, and the motorist has come to depend upon them more each year. They may be called throughways, or expressways, or parkways, or motorways, as well as freeways. But they are all the same to the hundreds of thousands of drivers who now use them. However, the freeways are a world to themselves. They have their own practical driving rules, and they have their own special kinds of problems, usually caused by motorists who ignore these rules. We have all seen such types, specimens like those we call Drivarius timidicus, the timid soul, and Neglectorus maximus, the careless, seemingly unconscious driver. And most of us have had a brush with Motoramus fidgetus, the impatient, discourteous motorist. What's the matter up there? Move it, come on, move it! With bad driving habits and techniques, <laughs> cause accidents and tie-ups that are dangerous and time-consuming for everyone. But there are other freeway problems, too. And they often start right here, off the freeway. Of course, there is a certain type of motorist usually involved. There he is now. A nice enough fellow, but the type who never takes care of things. He never seems to learn. So let's call him Stupidicus Ultimus. Ha! Oh, what a worry wart! Look at the old fuss budget. He is often rather contemptuous of anyone who takes such simple precautions as walking around the car for a look at the tires. Mr. S hasn't looked at his tires since he bought the car, so of course they've been run ragged. He hasn't had the motor or brakes checked either. If the car runs, he simply drives it off without a thought. Stupidicus just doesn't realize that on the freeway the demands on every part of his car are much greater. A slick threadbare tire is usually the first thing to go. Uh-oh, there goes my tire. Of course, this can cause Stupidicus to lose control of his car. But if it doesn't, that worn-out tire suddenly becomes very precious to him, and he will actually stop quickly in a traffic lane. Of course, this is the worst thing he could possibly do, and just for a tire that was almost certainly ruined anyway. On the freeway, seemingly minor things, unusual little noises or vibrations should not be ignored. A carelessly tightened wheel working loose, a rising temperature gauge, a rattling hood latch slightly damaged in a parking mishap can mean real trouble at freeway speeds. Uh-oh, there goes my tire. Stupidicus is the only one to blame for this predicament, but he has other ways of causing himself trouble, too. For example, the way he puts things in his car. See how carelessly he piles them in the back seat, never thinking that in a sudden stop... Oh, ouch! Oh, oh ouch! Mm. Everyone can become a dangerous projectile, threatening his life and limbs. But even worse is the way he loads a trailer. He uses
usually piles too much on and then ties it down very carelessly. Naturally, at freeway speeds, part of the load is soon distributed along the way. This adds to other carelessly scattered litter, all of which costs millions of dollars a year to clean up. But there are often more immediate and far more serious results. Another cause of trouble for Stapidicus is his unreasoning belief that it is most economical to buy just enough gasoline for immediate needs. Uh, two gallons, bud. <laughs> that ought to get me there. Without any reserve fuel for possible delays or miscalculations, eventually there can only be one result. Gas. Not one gas gauge must be busted. Of course, Stupidicus does sometimes manage to get his car safely out of the traffic lanes after a breakdown. But even then, he often lives up to his name by getting out on the wrong side. or sometimes trying to make repairs while actually standing in a traffic lane. Sometimes he will even bet his life in a foot race from the center divider to the side. Once in a while, in spite of all precautions, a breakdown will occur. This is a serious matter on a busy freeway, but the dangers can be lessened by following a few common sense rules. First of all, remember that you are in a flowing stream of traffic that cannot be stopped quickly. So if trouble develops, look around and plan your moves. There is nearly always time for that. Next, be sure to give clear signals of your intention before doing anything. Now move carefully but firmly to the side, the outside preferably, if it can be made safely and in time. Almost any driver will be courteous enough to drop back if he realizes you're in trouble. Once off to the side, get well out of the adjacent traffic lane. Get out of your car only if it can be done safely. And even then, stay as far from the moving cars as you can. If it can be done safely, a raised hood is a rather universally recognized distress signal. But warning devices, such as flares or reflectors, should be carried also. Three or four in a bundle secured under the front seat. Always look out for spilled gasoline or other fire hazards before lighting flares. And set them carefully. Set at least one about 50 paces back on the edge of the road even a bit farther if stopped over a hill or around a curve. Another near the car is recommended, and any such devices are especially vital at night. It's easy to see that good mechanical condition is essential, but there is something else equally as important, the driver. Aside from his car, the condition of the driver, mentally and physically, is vital too. For example, he will put in a hard day's work at the office, getting ready to leave on a vacation. Maybe even attend a little farewell party. Happy vacation. Have a good time. <laughs> oh, goodbye. See you in two weeks. And start out at the end of the day, planning to drive three or four hundred miles without a stop. Inevitably, fatigue sets in. But Stupidicus keeps going because he doesn't realize the danger. Let us pause and see what he's up against if he has to stop suddenly. Remember that for a driver to see something, decide what to do, and then take action, usually takes from three quarters to a full second. Brakes are applied only after that time. When fatigued, 
a driver may take two or three times as long before using his brakes. Of course, alcohol can make this problem even worse. But in addition, an intoxicated driver, confronted by an emergency, will often use very poor judgment and take unnecessary chances. Another problem on long trips is that the constant speeds and steady hum of the engine tend to subject Stupidicus or any other driver to a kind of freeway hypnosis. This is a serious hazard. But it can be overcome by occasional stops off the road for a moment's rest and refreshment. Finally, Stupidicus doesn't seem to realize that adverse weather conditions always exaggerate and intensify any freeway problem. And that extra care must be taken at such times. He must learn that planning ahead is essential to safe, efficient freeway driving. And he must not forget that this applies to short trips as well as long ones. Many common freeway problems can be avoided if a simplified sort of checklist is followed before getting on the freeway whether to go across the city or across the country. This checklist should include the car, fuel, water, tires, brakes, engine condition, and seat belts. It should include the driver, rest beforehand, be alert, no alcohol, rest stops on long trips, and it should include the freeway, traffic conditions, weather conditions, knowing where to get on, where to go, and where to get off. And there is one more item to be included always, one for which there is no substitute, plain common sense. Yeah, <laughs> just plain common sense. <laughs>